what a game. Yeah, I have to say, the bag's of excitement. Uh, obviously, you know, quality wasn't there in a lot of the game, but I think when you look at the goals, you know, and the way the, the game panned out, the extra time, and, you know, Celtic in the end sort of hanging on to whatever they had. But uh, I think from a neutral's point of view, uh, it had everything, and it's what we want to see in these games. When you look at, and you were part of the Sky panel yesterday, when you look at the huge global audience that game would have had, uh, you know, for all its faults, it would have had a, a really good impact globally. Yeah, it was compelling viewing. You know, the atmosphere was as brilliant as always, what you'd expect, the noise, the colour, and, and the game, the, the tempo of the game was, you know, really good. It was exciting. Uh, could have went either way the game. I think Celtic will be disappointed that they didn't win the game. We haven't been 2 0 up and then 3 2 with a few minutes to go. However, I think Brendan will be delighted with the way the team played and the mentality of the team as well. Although I just felt they conceded a little bit of ground in the second half. But sometimes you do that subconsciously as a team as well, Pete. The turning point or the, the, the momentum shift was the penalty for Rangers. You know, give them a, a, a leg in the game, which. Up until then, they'd been so far off it. After a game uh, with the enormity of it for people suggesting if Rangers win it, they're well on their way to the title. If Celtic win it, you know, the advantage, the pendulum <coughs> swings. Um, so after it, honours even, where do you think the advantage lies before we get into the meat and bones of the game itself? I think both camps will probably feel as though, and will rightly feel as though it's in their own hands, that their own destiny is there. I think probably, I think Celtic might just edge it, the fact that the last game is played at Celtic Park in front of their own crowd. They've not lost a game against Rangers this season. In fact, I don't think they've been behind against Rangers at, at any point. I think they'll feel as though yesterday they let Rangers off the hook. I think... Um, <coughs> They were very dominant in that first half performance. I think it could have been a wider margin that they went into the break with. I think they'll take a lot of confidence from the way they played in, in an environment like that. Very hostile, you're not going in against it with any of your own fans, as we know. But I think Celtic will feel as though they've, they've maybe just got an edge given what lies ahead. Rangers, I think, will draw on the fact that they recomposed themselves after looking so far out of it. Mm, um, to the game itself, if you're Philip Clement, um, you must be sitting uh, in that dugout looking and thinking, 21 seconds and everything I've said to you in the dressing room is out the window. Yeah, but I mean, you have to be prepared for that, even though you, you don't expect it. You know, O'Neill used to say to us, like, for all our preparation, it could be a goal down after one minute. And it was a bit of a freak goal, let's have it right. Um, so it wasn't a great... And they never recovered, Peter. You know, you're looking for... You know, a bit of experience in the team to get some passes going, get some moves going. They were just um, they were very, very tentative after that for long periods. And Celtic capitalised on that. I think Clement earned his money yesterday. There's no question because at half time you think, and that's such a poor performance. And everybody's been talking the team up, but they came out and they showed really good will without the quality, but they will themselves back into the game. What would you have said and what do you think Brendan said? Maybe, I'm not saying, suggesting that it would have been vastly different, but what would you have said after such dominance in the first half? Let's get the next goal. You know, that's all you've got to think about. Go and make a 3-0 and kill the game off. 2 nils. sometimes when you're playing that well, you don't want half-time to come. Rangers definitely want that half-time to come. Celtic, it's hard to pick up the momentum again of, you know, and that sort of flow more or less straight away. And um, obviously, bringing Seymour on, I think, galvanised Rangers and give them more pace and width in the team, which they lacked in the first half. But for me, from a Celtic point of view, you know, Brendan would have been delighted at half time, but, you know, still switched on. Penalty or not, Celtics? The first time I saw it, I, I thought it was a dive the way he went down. But once I saw it again. Celtics. Oh, Celtics. Oh, humble. A penalty. Yeah. But again, I never saw it in real time. Uh, so you have to give VAR a bit of congratulations on that one because it all happened that quick. But uh, obviously when we saw it again, you know, it's definitely his elbow, he hits it. And as I said the other day there, it's not the first time Golson's been in that situation inside the 18-yard uh, box. He's got away with it two or three times for whatever reasons. But again, it was just clumsy, you know, it was a centre-half, you want to go and win it with your head. Yeah, um, and at that point, again, we mentioned... <laughs> Prior to it, we were wondering how much VAR would be involved in the game. It was there at critical points in that match. 
And again, this is the second time that Rangers have had 50,000 fans, no Celtic fans there, and Celtic were able to quieten the crowd, the penalty. I mean, for a guy to show that kind of calmness right down the middle, Matt O'Reilly. Particularly coming, I think, in the back of a fairly inauspicious re return from penalties this season from Celtic. I think they, they'd missed five out of... Scored five out of ten, missed five out of ten. So yeah, I thought it was super composed. I thought he was the coolest man in the park actually at that point when when he took it. But yeah, I think Ibrox got very quiet as soon as uh, Maeda scores that opening goal. All of a sudden, you press the mute button, and then by the time O'Reilly scores the second goal, you can hear a pin drop within the stadium. I think uh, you know that obviously works in Celtic's favour. You just uh, you just mute the crowd and and take that element out of it. I thought um, I think the only thing that Celtic will feel is that they could have had a, a wider return by the time they get into the interview. The game could have been put to bed before they get in at the break. <clears throat> yeah, were you surprised by the way they went about their business, Neil, and the way Celtic played football? And, and in contrast to that, in that first half, Rangers did not seem to have a game plan to counter it or indeed to try and force themselves on Celtic. No, I think you, like, you can see the goal after a minute, but there's... <laughs> Loads of time to get back into the game. They never really did that, Peter, for the first half. Yeah. You know, Silva was going down a lot, you know, rolling around, breaking up the, any momentum that uh, Rangers were trying to build. The Celtic performance didn't surprise me because that's the way they play. You know, and the more the teams come on to them, the more they've got the ability to play through them. And, you know, they've got devastating pace and, you know, the, the wide areas. I thought Hattari and O'Reilly were excellent in the first half, you know. Great composure and, and speed of play, and uh, you know they just looked far superior. Yeah. There was a gulf in quality in the first half between both the teams. There are two positives, uh, well, a positive and a negative from the first half is the fact that Butland produced, you know, two great. Saves. I mean, the the, the save from O'Reilly is fantastic. You know, I, th I thought the Maeda one was a comfortable head from, but obviously he's still got to make the save. But the O'Reilly one, you know, looked the goal all the way, and he's just. Made an unbelievable save to tip that away. And before we get to the second half, which I think <clears throat> rightly so, uh, there's praise there for Philippe Clement because he has to he has to change things around. But Silva, I think at one point was even upsetting Rangers fans who just wanted they wanted to see a shot on goal, Ruffy. They wanted to see some quality, and he seemed more intent in rolling around. Yeah, he was very theatrical, <clears throat> you know, and I think even the Rangers supporters were. Sort of a bit miffed with it, you know, they're rolling about and holding your face, and when you've not really, there's not been any contact in his face at all. Uh, and as Neil said, it disrupted anything the Rangers were trying to do. You know, okay, you might have got a free kick out of it, which at that particular time, where all Rangers were feeding on, no free kicks into the box, corners into the box, that looked as if it was the only way they were going to score. But uh, yeah, you're right, you know, but uh, you know, we don't like to see that in the game anyway. Yeah, I thought Rangers. Uh, in the second half, and again, this was down to maybe sometimes you, you know you can get a, a a moment in the game that changes the fortunes. And Neil's highlighted uh, Abdallah Sima. He comes on for Scott Wright, and suddenly that axis starts to change in the second half. Um, yeah. and, and I, admittedly, of course, everybody's looking towards the penalty, which we'll get all your thoughts mm. on. But they they did come out and respond to the manager, who apparently. Tore into them. Yeah, I think Seema changed the game for them. I think Scott Wright had been anonymous in the first half and I think Celtic had so much joy down that whole side of the pitch in the first 45 minutes. I thought Seema definitely brought something extra. He injected a bit of pace, a bit of width into the team. Uh, and, and I think you, could, you knew at half-time that there would be changes. You mm. knew that, that Rangers would come out and, and go full throttle to try and get themselves back into the game. Uh, but I thought he was a catalyst for that. I think the pivotal moment is the penalty. I don't think there's any question about that. Is it a penalty thought, see, in your mind? No, not for me. I think... Um, I think the way that... I think Johnson flicks the ball. I think he gets a touch on it. I think his momentum carries him through. And I think... I think Silva was going down all the way. Yeah, the, the, the one thing I would say about this, and this is something, whether it's a, whether it's a, a Rangers Celtic game or any other game, the one thing that I've been you know saying continually week in week out on this program, Neil, is if you're going to have VAR and you're going to make big calls, the referee John Beaton is five yards away from mm. that. He can see it. Um, I would love to get to a situation where the fans, the viewers. 
and everybody is made aware of what the conversation is going on between Nick Walsh and John Beaton, because in my mind, if that transparency can let everybody hear what's being said, you would then understand who's refereeing the game. Yeah, the other thing is John made the decision, which I thought at the time was correct. He gave a, a free kick out to Celtic, because um, I felt at the time, you know, Johnson did get some of the ball. And then for me, the leg's still out there and Silva falls into it. The two lads in the in the uh, studio with me, they disagreed. They thought it was a penalty. So there's arguments to and for that, like, you know, but I thought it was soft. And then John's going over to look at the screen and obviously he's changed his mind because to me, did John make a clear and obvious error? I don't think he did, you know, because I felt that, you know, Johnson got some of the ball. Um, but obviously in his mind, or the chat that he had with Nick Walsh, that they decided to change it and, and give the penalty. I thought it was soft, I have to say. And did it decide the game? No, it didn't. But it certainly gives a real foothold in the game for Rangers, which they hadn't looked like getting before that. And I'll tell you one thing, uh, Ruffy, um, we've talked about it uh, ad nauseum on this programme. Taking a penalty kick is a skill, it's an art, and boy, in a game like that, I mean, we've already talked about Matt O'Reilly chipping it down the middle. James Tavernier's into the roof of the net, right in the postage stamp. Yeah, in all fairness, it was it was placed very well. I thought Joe Hart nearly got to it. I think he read it particularly well. I think he, On the way out? No. <laughs> no, no. I, I, if, you get a chance, if you get a chance to see it again, his hand wasn't that far away from it. He'd guessed yeah. and went early, you know, because I think that's his favourite uh, corner to put it into and uh, but again he's got 50,000 people behind him you know then the confidence must have been there to get the team back into the, the game uh, on the penalty incident itself I had the chance to play it VAR this morning in the house yeah with the, my remote control by rewinding it and seeing it and freezing it and going yeah. back and I have to say that initially I thought it was a dive but the more and more I watched it back and forward I thought it was a penalty okay. yeah uh, okay, I mean, like, that's the great thing about it. It's all about opinions. Uh, although how you could rewind a Betamax video recorder <laughs> escapes me. It's a black and white. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, over and above that, again, we go back to the situation where suddenly John Beaton, you know, for all these criticisms, and, and as you said, is he instrumental in the overall outcome of the game? That's open to debate. Is he a referee that, you know, people are looking to, to, to blame before the game kicks off and for what he did during the game. But he was five yards away from Iwata when the tackle was made before Rangers raced up the park, Alison, to score the goal. And and I think it shocked most of the, the fans inside when suddenly VR intervenes again. Did he get that right? It was Bedlam at that point. It's a kind of frantic two, three minute spell for Celtic. I thought he did get it right. I think um I think I know there was a, an argument that there had been two or three passages of play that led up to the goal that he could have let it stand, but I think he did get it right. I think when you look back at it, it is a foul. We uh, we watched it straight away, everybody saying it's a foul. And not only that, Pete, when, uh, I, I can't remember, was it Silva who maybe got, got the ball? He's got acres to run into then, yeah. because of what has been taken out of the game by the tackle. You know, so whether it's like second or third phase, whatever you want to call it, the goal comes from initially a foul for Celtic. And, I thought the referee had a good game, I have to say, yeah. and I think that's why the game was so good to watch, you know. I know everyone's on eggshells about the refereeing decisions at times, but I thought in the main he handled the game pretty well. Yeah, I, th I thought it was a bonus that he was actually refereeing the game and not the Sky, the VAR guy. It Imagine was. John Beaton had been VAR and changed these two decisions. Yeah, it's an interesting you know I mean? point. I think the other thing about it, which is very, very difficult nowadays, especially in this society, is quite simply that John Beaton was on a hiding to nothing. Yeah. I'm quite happy that you, you, to hear you say uh, your thoughts on him and the refereeing because I think the pressure now on referees from social media, from what I call this constant tribalism that goes on, um, here is a boy who has to be very careful you know, in his own private life and also goes out there to referee a game with that stigma of, well, he's going to, he's going to give, you know, in this case, decisions to Rangers and because of the perception of the majority of uh, Celtic fans. So he calls that one right. <clears throat> and then, of course, um, we're getting to a situation where this game just kept coming up with surprise after surprise. Did you think McGregor was off it yesterday? 
Oh yeah, I mean, it's he, uncharacteristic. Yeah, I, I think he's still carrying a bit, you know. But it was good, you know, when you, when he's not in the lineup before the game, you, you're worried. But the way Celtic took to the game, you, we didn't miss him. He didn't look great. I don't know if he's got a, a long-term problem there, um, and it's very uncharacteristic of him, you know. So he's very, very rusty. Whether it was the right to say, I, I thought the sub sort of diluted the game a little bit. But you understand what Hatate for me goes off after 64 minutes. You know, Celtic need to get more minutes out of him because he's a top player. Yeah. You know, he was brilliant first half. Um, O'Reilly coming off, you know, as your two creative midfield players. So <clears> sort of sending a bit of a message, you know, maybe we'll hold what we have, really. And like I said earlier on, I've played in games, Pete, at Abrox, where you're 1-0 up, you start looking at the clock. You do, <laughs> you know, 64-70, but 1-0 up. And subconsciously, you do tend to go that way. And just defend it and try and hit on the counter attack. I think the Edith substitution was good because it gave him a bit of an outball because yeah. Rangers went man to man and pressed up against Celtic and they found it difficult to get out. And he was a good outball for them. Um, it was disappointing with Yang. Um, but you got to give Rangers, Matundo. I, I, I thought Clement would have brought the two wingers on at half time. Yeah. You know, taking uh, Silva and Scott right off because um, they, they just looked. You know that they needed an out ball because everything was in front of the Celtic first half. Yeah. Um, so the subs, you know, definitely had an impact. And if you don't for both the teams, yeah. And if you don't buy a ticket for the raffle, see my shot. Okay, it gets a little bit of. Listen, you got. I'm all for it. You know, yeah. uh, it doesn't matter to me whether it got a deflection or not. You can say it's lucky or not. But you're right. If you don't shoot, you don't score. It's the same with Matondo. He comes inside. He goes bosh. You know, nine, six times out of ten, the could go there. There, he caught it. Perfectly, it was a wonderful goal. It was, and to be fair, Ada's goal was a cracker as well. Yeah, it was a world of the two goals. I mean, at that point, you're sitting there, you're going, Okay, it's going to be 2 2. Next minute, Celtic got the park and score, and you're thinking, You're looking at the clock, and you're saying to yourself, This game's get absolutely everything. There was still more to come after that. Yeah, 71 seconds or something, I think it was, after Rangers had levelled it, but Celtic went back up the park and, and made it 3 2. And you're, at that point, you're looking at the clock and you're thinking, There's three minutes. Uh, regulation time to go. You knew there was going to be a fair bit of time added on uh, because of the stoppages. Uh, but I think you would have expected Celtic just to, to see it out, to show it up, to tighten things, slow the game down, just take it at that point. I think they'll be disappointed not to have done so. That's taken nothing away from the quality of the goal. It's an extraordinary goal, a great, uh, absolutely superb finish. You saw it last week against Hibs. I do think there is some criticism of Yang. Uh, just before he gets, he cuts inside and gets it on and, and curls it in. But I do think you have to applaud the finish. I thought it was a fantastic goal. But yeah, I, I think it was just it was a fantastic theatre yesterday. I think a uh, fantastic advert for the Scottish game. I think uh, it, just two teams really going to, toe to toe, both wanting to win it. Even when you're seeing three, four minutes uh, still to go, both of them, I think, were still going out and trying to when win it. When it goes 2 2, when you just go 2 2, you're thinking, Oh, the Alamo's coming now for Rangers, you know what yeah. I mean? They just go, <clears throat> and then out of the blue, well, not out of the blue, Rangers must be kicking themselves as well, Peter, for conceding straight after working so hard to get back level. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then, you know, you think in the bubbles burst here, Salik 3 2 up, see it out. And then, you know, the, the game had a bit of everything, and uh, I think a lot of players left it out there on the pitch. Yeah, Philip Clement, the Rangers manager, as you've no doubt heard, said he reckoned this was a, a moral victory for Rangers. And then it became a really, yeah, for you guys, crazy scenario. For us, the scenario that I wanted. Not with uh, the 2-2 two -two and then the 2-3, the of course. But we deserve, and clearly deserve, at least a point today. What we've shown. And uh, I think we're, the, at the end, the moral winners of this afternoon. Because a uh, few months ago, for sure not this team could have reacted after 0-2 in an old firm. And I don't know if many, many teams in the past could have done it. Well, certainly his team mm -hmm. battled back in the second half. Uh, I thought he deserved a point, did you? Yeah, I thought so in the end. You know, I think he was, he's right in some of the stuff that he said there. I thought it was really interesting, Cameron Vickers getting interviewed after the game, saying that 50,000 Rangers supporters was a positive for Rangers because it willed them on. And yeah. he said, I think he said, no, correct me if I'm wrong, I think he said it was very difficult to defend that with you know, time running out and you know them coming forward, the crowd pushing them forward. So yeah. 
it must affect, and Lenny's already said you're looking at the clock, but I just thought they got deeper and deeper did. and yeah. deeper. What's it like, though, as a player, when it's not going according to plan and you can see the decibels increasing from the home support? What's it like? What's it like as a player? <clears throat> yeah. Um, like I say, you know, you take safety first measures, you know, you, you started, like, subconsciously. I remember you playing in many games, winning by a goal up at Ibrox and, you know, basically... Defending maybe five, ten yards outside the box, and then, you know, look, but we had you know big boys in the team who could handle you know most of the stuff. Um, so you don't mean to do it. Yeah. It's just sometimes you can't stop it, and you know the momentum was the three injuries, and um, I'm not convinced that they deserved a draw. Like you know yeah. what I mean? I know what you guys are saying, but just on the basis of the you know the first half was so inept, and uh, you know Celtic had the guilt edge chances to you know put the game to bed, but they definitely you know will themselves to get back into the game, not by playing anything special, but just by sheer will and determination. You've got to admire that. I, I was disappointed with some of his comments after the game yesterday. You know, I didn't agree with it. I don't know what a moral victory means in, a, in, a, in an old firm derby. If yeah. you ever get one, you either win it or you lose it. Yeah. I, I know there's some people posting... But you said, I don't know about celebrating a draw. Yeah. I noticed somebody says, well, he, he was celebrating a 5 5 game winning. Yeah, but that was, I was celebrating a goal league. They, they, <laughs> they were doing a lap on it around the pitch in that yesterday. <laughs> you know, back in the day, if you'd, if we'd have drawn 3 3 at Salt Lake Park, would have been yeah. booed off, like, you know. Yeah. But anyway, I digress. Um, I'm not convinced that they're the team that people are making them out to be at the minute. I think they've been good. Yeah. I think they're competent. But I think when they go up against the a quality team to struggle. If you score three goals at Ibrox, Pete, yeah. nine times out of ten you expect to win it, don't you? Yeah, well, and at that point I was going to make to you, because this is where we get to in a moment, I'll, I want to speak to you guys about this before we move on to the other games. Um, obviously, Brendan Rodgers looked at the whole game um, and certainly was very complimentary about that first half. Maybe debated whether it was the best they'd played this season. I thought certainly it's the best football I've seen from Celtic in the first 45 minutes. He reckoned that John Beaton um, got one big decision um, right. He should have stuck with it. Uh, and that was the decision to book uh, Fabio Silva and not award a penalty. Um, this is what he had to say on that key moment. Um, I'm disappointed in the penalty. It gave them an up in the game when we were much clearly the much better team. I thought the ref got it absolutely right on the field. He connected with the ball, the player simulates and it was right. Uh, they then score the penalty, it gets to 2-1 and then you expect something from Rangers and that's exactly how it panned out. And um, listen, we've all had our tuppence worth to say about it. Some you agree, some you don't, you know. Did they deserve a point? Uh, you know, what about the contentious decisions? Give us your thoughts.